DI box. What's it for? Why do we need boxes like this in our toolkits to go to gigs with or recording? Well, you would need one if you're a bass player or an acoustic guitar player, if you've got an electro acoustic guitar, for example, or a keyboard player, anyone who outputs something on a jack plug. So including DJs as well, if they're plugging into big mixing desks, you need stuff like this. So I'm going to demonstrate one of these now. Um, and I'm going to play the bass first through the line input of a mixing desk. I've plugged it into channel one here and I've plugged it into the line input and I've got my volume up here. The second channel is what I'm going to dis uh, demonstrate in a minute with the DI box. So I'm going to play the same riff through the line input and I'm going to put it through the DI box and you'll be able to hear the difference. So I'm now going to stick that through the DI box. There we go. I'm going to plug this in via my mic cable. There we go. Now I'm going to plug it into there. I'm going to play the same thing and you'll hear that all the treble has suddenly appears. And I'll explain why. So I've tried to play roughly the same level, volume level, with the same amount of slap. It's easier to demonstrate with the slap thing because it's more top end. Now, it's a bit like uh, if you have a shower head in your bathroom, like an eight inch shower head that's being fed from a piddly little gravity tank, a tank in your roof. It's not gonna work. It's just gonna trickle out of one side. Not enough pressure two solutions. Either you put mains water into your shower, which would be cold, or you put a smaller shower head on. So you're, what you're doing is you're matching the, the pressure from the tank to your shower head. We call it impedance matching uh, with electronics, with audio electronics. Essentially, that's kind of the analogy. Um, so you heard much, much more treble there. Uh, now, the reason for that is partly to do with the pickups and the fact that the line input there is the big shower head and it sucked too much pressure out of your pickup. So you end up with a little trickle. But I put a smaller shower head on with the DI box and suddenly I had all my pressure and my full fidelity of water coming out. That's kind of what I've done. Now, the second use of a DI box is to convert what's known as an unbalanced signal into a balanced signal. What's balanced and unbalanced? I mean, unbalanced, you kind of think of somebody who's, you know, got a few personal problems, but what it is, is an unbalanced signal. You have a ground wire and then you have a signal wire. Now that signal, what you're listening to there is mains that I'm picking up through my body and it's being amplified. What happens is that single signal goes to its destination, but it gets, you know, there's signals all the way along, radio signals, lighting signals, mains frequencies, all sorts of nasties, mobile phone, beep, 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 going through that cable. And by the time it gets to the other end, it's full of stuff, noise and all that nasty stuff. However, if you plug your bass or your keyboard or your well the mic is three pin anyway if you plug the line input into your di box from the output of the di box comes a lead that has a ground wire and two signal wires now if you imagine a signal is a an up and a down that's on one pin on the other side you have down and up now, when those two signals that are flowing along the cable get to the other end, there's still a down and an up, sorry, an up and a down and a down and an up. What happens is because those signals are exactly opposite to each other at the other end, essentially they would cancel each other out completely. But actually in the circuitry of your input, you flip one of the pins and you end up with both signals doing that. That's great. How does that help us with the interference? Well, the interference goes on to both of those cables and because it's the same signal going on to both cables, you have 
an up and a down and an up and a down. So by the time you get to the other end and you switch the interference, which you're switching at the same time as your signal, the interference is canceled out. That's what's so useful about it. So that is a, a balanced line and an unbalanced line. Now a DI box also takes a high level input and converts it into a very low level mic signal, which can then be dealt with by your mixing desk or your input to your uh, sound card or whatever it is. So some DI boxes, this one included, is quite, quite a few features on it. Um, it's got attenuator. So if I play a normal signal level, if the output of the bass is quite high, the engineer might come and just switch the attenuator on. There you go, it's stripped 20 dB off the signal. That's quite a lot. Now there's a second attenuator button on here, which attenuates it even further. It's hardly there. So it's just useful to be able to damp that signal down so that you can use it at your mixing desk. You're not having to deal with something really strong. There's also another thing on here called filter. Now this doesn't really do anything to the audio, but what it does is it, it filters out any very high frequency things like radio signals or any other nasties that you don't want. So it doesn't. It doesn't really make any difference to your audio signal, but it can make a difference if you've got little rustly noises or anything that you want to get rid of. Now on the output side, we have something called a ground lift and a phase inverter. Uh, so this is very well equipped really. Phase invert is if you, let's say I've put my bass through this and my bass amp. Sometimes if you're mixing the two signals together, you can lose all of your bass because you've got phase problems. Usually a quick press of that switch should solve matters. Now the ground lift is a little bit different. I'm going to take the my base lead that I had plugged into my base, and I'm going to plug it into the output of my little base amp down here. Now at the moment, if I turn the gain up here, you can hear a little bit of hum. Now, if I press the ground lift switch in, it reduces it. Not always, it doesn't always get rid because it depends on the circuitry of the amplifier. The amplifier might be picking up hum itself and amplifying that, but it reduces it. So the ground lift switch out and your hum returns. This is more of a problem with keyboards usually, but it can happen with bass amplifiers as well. Electric guitarists don't really need to worry about this because the amplifier on an electric guitar is part of the instrument. You would always put a microphone in front of it and you hardly ever get any problems. So this is really aimed at bass players and keyboard players and acoustic guitar players who have to plug into uh, electroacoustic guitars who have to plug in to amplify themselves. So what you would do if you were a bass player on stage is plug into the input and then there's another jack here called input or through. And what that does is it just taps off the signal from your bass into your bass amp. So that means your bass amp can be independent on stage, but you're sending a nice clean pre-amplified signal to the engineer to do their stuff with. Um, some bass amps have a DI box built into them. Uh, so that there's an XLR on the back of your amplifier that you just plug in and that goes to your mixer, which gives you the option then of using either the tone controls of the bass amp or a switch usually says pre or post EQ. So you can have either the affected sound or the dry sound as it were. So there is a bit, basically an intro to your DI box. There are other models. This is a classic old uh, DI box, similar sort of thing. You plug your line input here. There might be two, this is, uh, you plug your bass in there, that goes out to your bass amp then your mic signal to the mixing desk. It's got a little switch here, which is uh, the ground lift switch. So up for, up for lifted or down for connected. Then you have speaker inputs. You can take some guitar amps and plug your speaker straight into this, which then converts it to an old, uh, to the three pin XLR. And then you also have things like this, 
which are stereo models, which are great for keyboard players where you have a left and a right for digital piano players. So you plug your left input and right input in there, and then you have two link controls. Just to say you've got two amplifiers on stage, you want to listen to your own piano, you just plug them into there. And then the other side, your XLRs go to your mixing desk. This also has a ground lift, uh, and it also has um, electronics which require power. Uh, now, most DI boxes that, have, that are active, not passive, but active, meaning they need power to power internal electronics, don't tend to amplify very much. They just reinforce the signal so that the, the, you get a, a really clean uh, output. Um, and this one can be powered by either a nine volt battery which goes in there or a little switch here uh, allows it to be powered by the phantom power that comes from your mixing desk, uh, which is 48 volt power uh, supply that goes down your mic cables. So there is the sort of a little bit more upmarket, one might say. You can pay any amount of money. This was only about 40 pounds, um, but you can pay 100 pounds for a DR box or you can get something like this art one here for sort of 25, 30 pounds. And it's really useful. Um, you get all sorts of problems at gigs. If you've got one of these, it can solve a multitude of sins.